bring in someone we believe is super talented. And today I am joined with Khaled Al Ahmad, also known as Shusma. Hi, Dan, how are you? I'm so happy you're here because you are considered a Jordanian tech and social media legend. So it's so good to, to be here in the studio talking about Shusma. I don't know about that, the legend, you know, but it's okay, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> Listen, we were just talking about taking taking what you can while yes, you can. Yes, I'll take compliment. So earlier today, Hamza, our social media guy, and I almost went to a fist fight over your username. Yes. So I'm like, Hamza, Shusmo is coming on under the spotlight. We have to tell people what Shusmo means. I know, that's why I'm like yeah. creating a little bit of an intro to it because everyone that hears your name goes like, Shusmo? Like, what is the story behind this? So maybe we can start there. Tell us a little bit about where Shusmo came from. Yeah, Shusmo in English is what Shama call it. Mm. So when Hamza told you, what's his name? Oh, what Shama call it? And he was thinking that you don't know my name yet. So he's like, she's going crazy, yeah. Uh, Shusmo is like, you know, we, because I, I, I do a lot of uh, personal branding consultations, so uh, uh, we, if we are on the phone, me and you, and I tell you I want to set up a meeting with you, and you said, okay, can I write your name down? And I said, my name is Khalid Ahmed, or Khalid Smith, or Khalid uh, Al Saud, or Khalid Tarame. Each name will give you a, a, a different uh, perception or a first impression of me that I don't want. So I want you to wait till we meet, and then you can make up that first impression. So that's why I neutralized the name by using Shusmo, which means nothing. You are joking. For real. Is this, the, oh my God, I have never thought about that before. Yeah, people think it's just a funny thing. It is, but there is a philosophy behind it. So when did you start this journey in branding and like online branding? Because you just explained something to me off air and I was like, can you please stop? You need to say all of this again. So you've had such an interesting um, journey until leading you to your latest venture that I think is going to be so valuable to so many people around the world. And where did it all start? Like, how did this come about? Okay. <clears throat> At age 42, uh, I decided to stop everything that I'm doing. And I said, I will not do anything on all levels of life unless it makes me happy. I was working in uh, investment banking for a Kuwaiti uh, company, and I said, no, I want to stop that. Uh, okay, so I start asking myself, what do you, what do you like? What makes you happy? I, don't, I didn't know what makes me happy, but I was pretty active uh, in social media and uh, blogs and so on, and Twitter, so I said, okay, I want that, whatever there is in that, and there was no jobs in 2007 and 8 in that field, but I was always reading and following uh, people abroad, you know, in the States and Europe, and I, I saw something about personal branding, that people start talking about personal branding, and I start studying that, and I start building my own brand from that day. And since then, I've been uh, monitoring everything that has to do with social media, everything that has to do with uh, personal branding, and lately, copywriting. That is so interesting. So. You went from investment banker uh, to teaching slightly younger Dana all about social media because I remember when, when it first started coming out on all of like these platforms and everyone, uh, we were consuming in a very silly way, or maybe I was consuming in a very silly way. We all were. Essentially, like there was memes, and then there was like two funny videos in, in the entirety of the internet, and like we would watch them, and then everyone would watch the same thing. And you were one of the few people that came in with like a very informative um, outlook. And like I remember when I would be reading your stuff, it would be the first time that I would feel like someone is speaking to us in Arabic and is kind of giving us a little bit of context about what's happening on social media. So after that, you kind of like took a deep dive into LinkedIn. Yes. So why LinkedIn? Well, in, uh, after the COVID, uh, Facebook, I, I was really active on Facebook and I have, um, I don't know, about 70,000 followers. And, but it started affecting me mentally, so it, it, in, in, a, in a negative way. And, uh, and because I spent a lot of time there and I said, okay, I need to cut it off. So uh, I decided to shut down my Facebook, remove all friends and connections and followers so I won't feel weak and go back again. I burned that bridge. Wow. And then I said, okay, I need to really concentrate on two, either Twitter or LinkedIn, because these two uh, platforms, they have 
two types of uh, uh, users, uh, thought leaders specialized in certain uh, subjects and uh, decision makers. Uh, in, on Twitter, there's more of media and politi politicians and celebrities. And LinkedIn, there is the CEOs and the managers and the thought leaders. So I said, okay, I will give uh, LinkedIn uh, a thought. And because I also heard uh, Gary Vaynerchuk says that uh, uh, LinkedIn 2020 is Facebook 2012. And what he meant is the algorithm on LinkedIn, it is still easy mm -hmm. when it comes to impressions and reach uh, organically. Uh, so uh, so that's why I went to LinkedIn. Two years back, there were not many people active there, not many uh, content creators, but now there is a lot of content creators in both Arabic and English. That is, that is so interesting, and I think you're right. Sometimes Facebook makes me a little sad, you know, and I feel like um, I'm, I always find a way to end up talking about mental health, and I'm sure like all of my friends and family and everyone's like, Khalas I just get it over with. Um, but essentially, I do believe that a lot of the times we're not very mindful about how we consume. It is going to make us feel very negatively mentally after a while. So I'm happy that you pointed that out. I think it's a really important thing. And you burnt the bridge so you can never go. Yes. Tell us it's gone. So you mentioned so many um, kind of like you, you told me that there was like this intro to your workshops. And I was like, wow, you say it absolutely phenomenally. So I feel like one, you should explain what your workshops are before we go into talking about Mishtama AI. And then give me that like story okay. again, because it's so good. Before I start, I just want to say hello to my wife, Neda, and my daughter who's listening to you, Natalie. Okay. Listen, I'm so sad Natalie didn't manage to come to yeah, the studio. Maybe one day, who knows? Okay. So what I, what I do is I help people create a person brand on LinkedIn. What does that mean? That means if uh, somebody uh, created success on the ground, but doesn't have the time or the skills to reflect it on social media or LinkedIn, I help them do, by doing that. And this, on the same token, different uh, face, uh, someone who was raised in a small town and they have no opportunities, they can utilize the, the social media to get ahead and increase their chances to get whatever they want. So that's that's basically what I do. So you want to talk about the, the intro, right? Do you know, I feel like it's so important because when you were saying it, it gave me hope. So I feel like let's sprinkle a little bit of that around. <laughs> so there is a book that's called uh, Unfair Advantage. The Unfair Advantage talks about each one of us uh, has an advantage that is not very common among other people. And so that's why we need to really believe success is not really from hard work. Success is because it's, it's a God plan for us. You know, some people make the success and the definition of success is different from one person to another. So unfair advantage is uh, for people who are privileged because maybe their parents are rich. Maybe they were born in a big city. Maybe they graduated from a huge university. So they have this uh, unfair advantage. Okay. So what about the rest of the people? So what did they do? There's another book called The Third Door. The Third Door is, is a great book. It tells you, let's assume that we are invited to a graduation party. So we go there and then they say, okay, so it's a full house. We cannot enter. We have to stand in line. Okay, so when I go back and stand in line, there's the long line and I will have to wait for long hours. I might get in, I might not. Okay, so when I look at the second door and there is this door with a red carpet for people who are privileged, you know, the people who work in the university and so on. But is this life, is this life black and white? No, it's not. So if you go around the building, you might see a third door that the workers use. If you go there, build up some skills, maybe emotional intelligence, uh, persuasion, sales, whatever. Keep knocking on that door till someone opens and then try to persuade them to get in. You will get in, you might not get in but your chances are much better than the first door. The first door, you have a lot of competition. The third door, you don't have much competition. So in reality, all of us are active online, digitally active, all of us, but we're just wasting our time. So what about if we try to uh, uh, upskill our skills and uh, uh, let's say I'm into designing or uh, programming or whatever. There are all type of sources I can go there and learn and I will have better skills. And these skills 
can help me uh, penetrate and get better chances. Do you know what? I feel like you've given me hope for the second time hearing <laughs> it. Um, because I, sometimes it does feel like it's very unfair, right? And a lot of the time I feel like it's very easy to bring yourself into kind of like a little bit of like victim mentality. Mm. Of like, oh, Muhammad, but that is home. Oh, Muhammad, whatever. But like, in reality, tell me. You know, that, that, what you just said, excuses and blaming, I promised myself at age 42 to stop doing that. The minute I stopped doing that, my life changed tremendously. So if I, even, even if blaming is right, even if I did not get the job because of wasta, even if it's true, but don't say it. You did not get the job because there was something wrong. Look within and try to learn and change and do better the next time. I absolutely love that because you take control. You take the power. Yes. Work on what you can control, not what you can't control. And this is going to bring us to uh, your new venture. So I'm going to play a quick song so I can take a small breath and then tell you all about this fantastic new idea that I tried out last night and I'm so hyped about. And I know that there's going to be so many updates, so many new features rolling out. So I'm going to be like stalking you guys all the time. We're going to be talking about